What's going on YouTubers, this is Buddy coming at you another quick video on the 20 gallon long tank build. Today we're going to talk about anemones. I had one of my subscribers um, ask me to do a video on anemones. His anemone was splitting, he had a rose bubble tip anemone. And he wasn't quite sure exactly why this is and he couldn't find any evidence online um, to really, uh, he couldn't fully, basically he couldn't find any evidence online to make him fully understand why this is, <clears throat> excuse me. So today we're basically going to talk about just rose bubble tip anemones because there is so many different type of species of anemones out there um, I just think it would be best to stick to basically just one kind so I'm going to give you a quick overhead shot of my anemone and stuff like that while I'm doing some talking here so here's my uh, anemone, it's a sea bay anemone beautiful green sea bay anemone with purple tips alright so in this video here basically we're just going to talk about them, give you a little feedback on why they bubble, why they don't, why they split, things like that propagation so the first thing we're going to talk about is why do they split so let's uh, let's get a little feedback on everything basically here uh, so first thing is um, we have anemones that do sexual reproduction and anemones that do asexual reproduction now sexual reproduction <laughs> is where um, you have a male and female anemone there there are male and females basically where they split uh, they release eggs into the water and this is done uh, generally by the moonlight it's uh, they follow the lunar phase and that is what uh, causes the them to know when to when it's time to release their eggs which is pretty cool so they release their eggs into the water the other one releases the sperm and they find themselves in the water column or come across themselves uh, the sperm fertilizes the egg the egg turns into larva sinks to the bottom of the ocean or aquarium or whatever and turns and grows into a full anemone, a uh, large species or full anemone here. And then we have asexual reproduction. Now, asexual reproduction is where the anemone splits. One more thing. Let me add this to the to this video too. Now, sexual reproduction um, was uh, wasn't anything that was ever done in captivity. Actually, the first time it was ever successfully done in captivity was in a. Uh, uh, at National Marine Science Central uh, Center at Coffs Harbor. Uh, that was done in 2005. That was the first time that uh, there was successfully sexual reproduction done, as far as I know, was at National Marine Science Center at Coffs Harbor in 2005. So that was just, I just wanted to throw that information there and give you guys a little, a little extra information there. So back to asexual reproduction. Now, there are only two species of anemones that actually split out of the ten sp different species of anemones that host anemone fish, which are clownfish. So there's only two of these species that uh, do the asexual reproduction, and rose bubble tip anemones are one of them. So what is asexual reproduction? Well, asexual reproduction is known as uh, fusion or budding. <coughs> budding, where they actually split rip themselves into two they actually split themselves in half um, and a lot of times honestly this is brought on by stress I don't want to you know say it's a, always a bad thing but a lot of times it's brought on by stress the stress can be due to fluctuations in temperature fluctuations in water chemistry um, a large water change can cause this um, overfeeding can cause this uh, if the lighting is too intense it can cause them. I've seen anemones split right before they bleach out and release all of their zoosanthellae and die off. So splitting, um, a lot of times, is, is brought on by stress. So basically, we would say splitting is often related to stress or feeding habits, water changes, and major changes in water chemistry. So that would be the reasons why they would split. Now, uh, normally, I, I would expect a rose bubble tip anemone to split roughly twice a year. I think that would be a normal thing. If it's splitting more than that, like I had a gentleman when I worked at the saltwater fish store come in one time and he kept saying, oh, I have another one, I have another one. His anemone split literally about 20 times in one year. And I said to him one day, I said, that is not normal for a rose bubble tip anemone to split that many times in one year. There's got to be something wrong. <clears throat> I said, I really think you should bring me in a sample of your water quality and let me test it. Since he did himself find this to be a nuisance because they were splitting so much and spreading all over his tank, he did allow me to come out and service this tank for uh, a few weeks. And so I came out and the first thing I did was ran a bunch of tests on this. I tested his water. First thing I found out was that he had high nitrates. 
So I automatically knew that there's a good chance that the fact that he had high nitrates was a good reason why his anemone was splitting. Um, really fast, anemones are kind of like SPS corals in a way, especially rose bubble tip anemones. They like um, uh, strong lighting and uh, obviously good flow. It makes you have a full spectrum. I feel like all corals should, should utilize a full spectrum. I don't honestly feel that just white and blue lights are a full spectrum. I've seen corals do just fine and look very good under uh, and grow very well and look very beautiful under just blue and white lights. Me personally, I really think we should implement the greens, the reds, the UVs, all them in there to really give us a full spectrum. So uh, really quick, SPS coral, or um, uh, rose bubble tip anemones are similar to uh, SPS corals. They like good lighting, good flow, uh, calcium around 400 to 450, alkalinity uh, between uh, 7 to 11. Uh, magnesium between that 1260 to 1350 range, pH between 8.1 to 8.3. And so basically, we want to try to stay as close to the natural seawater as possible, really, for good health. Uh, so obviously, good you know, good lighting, strong flow, and obviously keeping calcium alkalinity in check will also help keep uh, help keep pH stable too. And uh, those are really want to keep, and you want to keep uh, uh, obviously ammonia and nitrates at zero. Obviously, nit are nitrites, ammonia and nitrites at zero. Nitrates, you'd want to keep at, uh, I'd say, I don't know, uh, as close to zero as possible, you know, 2. 2. Uh, 2. 2.7 to zero, you know. Um, phosphates, uh, 0 0.02 or lower. Um, nitrates obviously closer to zero the better so basically that's kind of where you want to keep them you know uh, your levels so any fluctuations in, in, in water chemistry basically if your nitrates are high could induce splitting because that's going to stress out the anemone so basically I checked over his lighting I checked his flow I checked um, his calcium his alkalinity his magnesium his nitrates his phosphates uh, I checked his feeding habits you know and, and things like that his water change schedule to see if he was doing large water changes at one time uh, that's another thing if you're if you're the type of person that does monthly uh, ch water changes and so every month you're doing a large maybe 40 percent or 30 percent water change once a month that's going to dramatically change water chemistry and could induce stress on the anemone induce and cause them to split he was doing large water changes monthly and uh, that was another reason why it was splitting not only did he have high nitrates every month his water chemistry would be off because he would do that large water change so that would induce splitting. So splitting a lot of times is brought on by stress, uh, overfeeding and things like that. So it's not always a good thing, guys. So just keep that in mind. Um, and another thing I want to talk about is why do some rose bubble tip anemones have bubbled tips and some don't? Even though um, you might buy a rose bubble tip anemone that doesn't have bubbled tips and you may buy one that has bubbled tips and you bring it home and within a couple weeks it loses its bubble tips. Why is this? And you may buy a rose bubble tip anemone that doesn't have bubble tips, and then all of a sudden it grows its bubble tips back. Now, why is this? You know, it's really, really all theory on why this really is. There's really no strong evidence on why this is. But uh, uh, I believe his, his name was Futin and Allen. Futin and Allen. His name is F A U T I N. Futin and Allen. In 1992, suggested that if you didn't have a suitable clownfish, to host into the anemone, the anemone would uh, lose its bubbles. Or a anemone, a bubble tip anemone that didn't have bubble tips, if you introduced a suitable clownfish for that bubble tip anemone, it would form its bubble tips. That is not always the case, and I've seen many cases where that is just not true. And then in, uh, I believe it was 1997, Delbrick and Sprung in 1997 suggested that it was lighting. If your lighting wasn't intense enough, that it would lose its bubbled-like appearance, its bubble tips. Or if the rose bubble tip anemone was hungry, it would um, stretch out and have long, skinny uh, tentacles and would lose its bubble tips. I also find that not to be true and seen many cases where I disagree with that. Now, I do agree with all around having good lighting, good flow, uh, having a suitable clownfish, feeding your anemone um, a good, well-balanced diet uh, once to twice a week and providing everything that it needs, um, I do believe that it is more likely to 
obtain or reattain its bubbled tips. If we have a suitable clownfish to host in there, if we are feeding it a well-balanced diet, if we are providing the proper lighting, if we are providing good flow, I do believe that it is more likely that the anemone would obtain its bubble tips or uh, regain its bubble tips if we provide these things. And that is not always the case either. So I don't want you to feel like that is always the case. Um, so these are just some, basically some relatively, uh, basically some things I'm, um, some information on rose bubble tip anemones. So basically, like I said, water chemistry can, you know, change the water chemistry, change the temperature. Um, if the lighting's too intense, uh, overfeeding, um, any type of stress can cause, can induce them to split, and that is called asexual reproduction. Um, so basically, I like to feed, no, we'll, go, we'll talk about feeding here a little bit. I like to feed my anemones smaller particles of food more often. I feel like feeding them t two to three times a week, very small particles of food, helps the anemone uh, able to digest the food better. I feel like a large, feeding them a large silver side once a week, um, a lot of times you'll see the anemone consume the full silver side, but in a lot of cases they will puke it up in the middle of the night and your clean crew will make short work of it. Now this brings me to my next topic, do rose bubble tip anemones actually need to be fed? They do house zoosanthelae like um, other large, uh, other large pile stony corals or other corals, they do have that relationship with the zoosanthelae. So do they actually need to be fed? Me personally, I would say yes. I feel like they do need to be fed and I feel, be, I feel like once or twice a week is sufficient. I like to go between two to three times a week, smaller particles of food for overall health and coloration. Guys, I really hope this video helps you out on understanding anemones and understanding um, why they split and why they bubble, why they have bubble tips and why they don't. Guys, I really appreciate all of my subscribers. I appreciate all the love you guys are giving my channel. I really never didn't have any expectations, and honestly, I never expected to hit almost 160 subscribers. Um, that may not be much to anybody else, but that's a huge milestone to me, and I owe that to all you guys. I really appreciate all the love you give my channel, and I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. You've made this hobby more fun for me. Um, I really appreciate it, guys, and please like and subscribe. Thank you so much. Happy reefing.